Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Poonam Chavla, an assistant professor with Maharaja Agrasen Institute of Management Studies in Rohini. Today, we are going to discuss on the interesting subject of special issues in training and development. And this is first part of the series. The inclusions of the module are introduction, training issues resulting from the external environment, training issues related to the internal needs of the organization, this is followed by the summary. To give you an introduction, organizations are working in a dynamic business environment where they face external and internal environmental pressures related to business processes. Training is also influenced by various external and internal pressures like legal issues, partnering with a committed workforce, diversity training and school to work training issues that are confronted by the firm in terms of external environment. This module will briefly describe these issues and the manner in which firms can manage these issues. The internal pressures of the company or the internal environment incorporate training the managerial force, providing training and development to all the employees, handling issues like glass ceiling, joint union management systems, succession planning programs, etc. This module takes into consideration these special issues that arise in the training and development scenario and focuses on efficiently managing them. Training issues resulting from the external environment. There are three types of training issues that result from the external environment, namely legal issues, cross-cultural training and managing the workforce diversity. Legal issues. There are various training activities that make an employer prone to legal actions from the law of the land and may also have a poor impact on the organization's corporate reputation. The first and foremost legal issue is failing to provide adequate training to the employees. It is mandatory for the organization to highlight that the workforce has not only adapted to the newer methods learned through training but is also complying with the same for enhanced efficiency. The recent corporate scandals have also led to evaluation of quality of training that is being imparted to the employees and make them understand the manner in which rules and regulations of the firm work. Another legal issue that can be prompted is on-the-job training and simulation which involves use of work tools and equipments and if any injury takes place during the training session, it is necessary for the organization to pay the salary and also offer financial settlement for the injury caused. Thus, to avoid such a situation, it is necessary that managers must ensure that employees should be aware of the consequences of using the equipment properly and they must be made aware of using the safety equipments for best results. Employers, when acting as equal opportunity employers, cannot discriminate on the basis of religion, caste, gender, as it can invite legal action. It is necessary to mention that people with physical disabilities must also not be discriminated during a training session as this comes under a legal offense. There should be provision for reasonable accommodation 
as it refers to making training facilities available for individual with disabilities. Another major legal issue that arises is due to breach of confidentiality. The managers must ensure that they place correct information in the files of the employees as it may be used for their promotion or salary decisions and wrong and inaccurate information can invite legal action. Cross-cultural preparation or training. Cross-cultural preparation involves training the employees and their families who may be relocating at a foreign location. It is necessary to train the expatriates because they must understand the business practices and cultural norms of various countries. If they are not trained or are not aware of the socio-cultural norms, it is often that they may face a culture shock. It is imperative to mention here that cross-cultural training is a very costly affair for the organization. If the employee does not settle in the new environment, the firm may have to incur heavy expenditure. Firms provide language training to their employees so that they can gain knowledge about countries, culture and traditions. It is recommended that families of the expatriates be also involved in such a training process. The training can involve variety of methods like experiential methods, presentation methods for better understanding of the fundamentals. On-site training is also provided to expatriates in the host country and continuous mentoring programs or handholding is provided to them so that they can understand the culture and customs of the country. Proactive organization also offer workshops related to stress and anxiety to expatriates as many of them face this problem in the host country nations and continue support from the foreign subsidiary is necessary for the successful tenure of the expatriate. If the spouse of the expatriate is working, it is necessary to offer career counseling program to them so that they can also establish a niche for themselves in the host country. The job of cross-cultural training does not end here. Repatriation, which is an another important exercise and completes the circle of expatriation, means preparing the expatriates for the return to the parent organization from the foreign assignment. There might be high level of stress and anxiety in the minds of the expatriates and their family as they may have lost their usual presence in the company and their colleagues might have moved ahead leaving them with a feeling of loneliness and going through the process of readjustment. It is necessary that employees should be prompted to manage the repatriation process or the re-entry shock may increase. Thus, to avoid such a situation, the organization can act as facilitators for the expatriates who may feel undervalued in the home country. Mentoring is another brilliant technique that can be used by the company as the mentor can facilitate the change smoothly and can also help in solving the issues faced by an expatriate. 
a major issue that comes up is managing workforce diversity. Diversity refers to any dimension that develops a distinction between one person from another and it highlights the differences and variety in humans that may emerge due to age, ethnicity, education, sexual orientation, work style, gender, race, etc. The purpose of diversity training is to remove values and stereotypes and organizational practices that might act as an obstacle in employees' personal development and thus facilitate employees to render their support to the organization by utilizing their potential and also personally develop them. The equal opportunity law to much extent has ensured that females and minority categories are not neglected and well represented in an organization. Managing diversity in an organization refers to creation of an environment which ensures that all the employees are treated equally and they work towards contributing to the superordinate goal of the organization. The firm must develop a positive environment wherein fair and positive treatment is given to all the employees. It is the bounden duty of the organization to develop individuals who are interested in working with people from various ethnicities, race and religious backgrounds. Managing diversity refers to percolating this value in the culture of the organization. This refers to acceptance of diversity in terms of norms, standards and the manner in which people are treated in the organization, innovation and risk taking. If organizations are able to manage diversity, they can gain competitive advantage in the business world. The inputs of diverse employees are beneficial for customers and product markets. Organizations that accept and promote diverse culture develop positive corporate reputation amongst the employees and emerge as an employer brand. Diversity also promotes creativity and innovation in the organization as there is a tendency to break conformity. The productivity of the organization has also seen an upsurge if diversity is promoted in the firm. To effectively manage diversity, one of the methods is strict adherence to the legislation of the country and meeting the standards of an equal opportunity employer. Another usable method of managing diversity in the organization is affirmative action as a strategy because the firm can ensure that employees need to understand the manner in which their diversity and stereotypes affect people of other caste, gender or religion. It is through diversity training that people become aware about the cultural differences and this awareness may lead to improvement in the behavior towards minority groups. Diversity training is defined as a program which is developed to shift employees' attitude towards diversity and facilitate employees to have a skill set so that they can work with a diverse workforce. 
these programs which are simply bought off the shelf without taking into consideration the organizational needs, history and culture normally do not bring the desired change. Such programs provide employees with an opportunity to assess the cultural differences between cultural groups, examine their attitude towards affirmative action and furthermore analyze results why minority employees are successful and unsuccessful in their jobs. Behavior based programs focus on bringing a change in organizational policies and individual behavior that inhibit employees personal growth and productivity. A brilliant example of diversity training is culture immersion which refers to the process of sending employees directly into the communities where they have to interact with people from different cultures and nationalities. It is through such programs that creativity of people from various backgrounds can be adjudged and the managers can capitalize on the same. Training issues which are related to internal environment. They can be categorized into five parts, basic skills training, lifelong learning, melting the glass ceiling, sexual harassment training and succession planning. The first is basic skills training. Employers sometimes find it difficult to competent workforce at the entry level as entry level positions are usually for freshers who lack basic skills pertaining to the organization or as required by the job. To combat with this problem, employers have developed basic skills training program. Moreover, as the organizations develop high performance work culture, it might be identified that their current employees lack the skills required to realize the benefits of their own system. The basic skills program involves various steps. The first step in a basic skills program is to identify the necessary skill level. Secondly, employees current skills must be assessed. The training program shall try to fill the gap between current and desired skill. Training programs must include an emphasis on basic skills training and shall focus on the work problems faced in day to day work profile to enhance the meaningfulness of the basic skills program. Lifelong learning. A lifelong learning account refers to an account which pertains to adult education in which both the employee and the organization contribute and the employee keeps the receivables even if he or she leaves the company. The amount in the account can be used for variety of things like educational expenditure, tuition books, fees and non-job specific certification courses. Organization introduces such kind of accounts to make education a priority amongst its employees. The next issue is melting the glass ceiling. This is one of the major internal issues that are being faced by the organization of today wherein the problem of moving women and minorities to higher positions should be solved and the glass ceiling must be broken. The glass ceiling is a barrier to advancement to the higher level of organizations Reason behind this barrier is due to the stereotypes or company systems 
that have an impact on the development of women or minority. The reason for existence of glass ceiling is poor training and development programs, poor developmental job experiences. Research cites that there is a tendency that male managers tend to get more assignments of responsibility as compared to female managers and it was observed that female managers faced more obstacles and challenge due to absence of support. It is necessary to provide career encouragement to females as it tends to boost their morale and help them in moving towards higher positions. Managers who are developing assignments must keep a check whether they are influenced by gender biases or stereotypes. Many organizations have adapted mentoring as a useful to manage a diverse workforce and melt the glass ceiling by using mentoring programs to make sure that women and minorities gain the skills and visibility to move in the higher positions. The greatest benefits that can be derived from the mentoring program is that mentors and mentees feel comfortable with each other and can share experiences and ideas for meeting organizational objectives. Sexual harassment training. Sexual harassment is a specific type of behavior that can be eliminated by diversity training, but it needs discussion because these kind of activities have been going on in the corporate However, there are very few complaints, but one can see a sharp rise in the complaints nowadays. Sexual harassment is considered as an unwelcome advance which may be of sexual nature and can be divided into two types, namely quid pro quo harassment which states that a subordinate is offered a job work by a senior employee in return of a sexual favor and if any such act happens, the organization is considered liable for this kind of sexual harassment. The second case is the hostile work environment wherein words, gestures and behavior of an individual are such that they make the other person unformatted is also considered to be sexual harassment. There are various effective strategies that are required for dealing with sexual harassment wherein the first and foremost being development of a sexual harassment policy in which it should be made clear that organizations are not going to accept sexual harassment and those found guilty of sexual harassment shall be severely punished. Secondly, the efforts to manage or reduce instances of sexual harassment must gain support from the top management of the firm for effective implementation of rules against it. It must be evident that serious views of such activities shall be taken in the organization. The third and most important part is development of, for sexual harassment, which clearly defines what sexual harassment is and contains information routes and videos which reveal information about it. It is necessary to provide training to everyone so that workforce is aware about it and top management can start an online learning session on the same topic 
citing the gravity as well as the participation of employees in the process. Such training programs should be evaluated to assess whether employees are aware about acceptable and unacceptable behavior. The organization must have a formal complaint process in place and there must be people who could be contacted if any employee faces such an issue or a problem. The complaints regarding to sexual harassment must be responded to quickly. It may offer relief to the victim as well as also intimidate the wrongdoers. The individual or the offender if found guilty should be severely punished to provide a lesson to others and shall also reinforce organization's view on the sexual harassment policy. Succession planning. Succession planning refers to the process of identifying and developing the future leadership of the organization. It is an important step in the organization as it also helps in managing and retaining the talent in the firm. It is a program to develop high potential employees in the firm. The high potential employees are those employees who have the capacity to take up leadership positions in the future. The development of high potential employees takes place in three steps. The first step involves selecting a large number of employees who are considered to be high potential but this number of high potential employees may be reduced because of turnover, poor performance in the firm or by the personal choices of employee as he or she may not like to strive for a higher position in the organization. In stage 1, high performers or high potential employees are selected. This selection can be based on education, their outstanding performance in the firm and in many cases the firm may also use psychological testing. The second stage involves high potential employees to receive developmental experiences. The employees at this stage use Highlight the willingness to sacrifice if necessary for the organization. Good oral and written communication is necessary. Moreover, good interpersonal skills and leadership abilities must be adhered and the incumbent must also possess a talent and knack for leadership. Employees who do not meet the basic criteria are considered unfit for the higher position in the company. The third stage involves top management assessment which should actually feel that the right choice has been made for leadership positions in the organization. The top manager must actively participate in the process of succession planning in stage 3 for required results. It takes about 15 to 20 years for an employee to reach stage 3. This is the summary of the complete module. This module discusses the various training and developmental issues that organizations face from external and internal company environment. The external environmental pressures incorporate legal issues, workplace diversity, cross-cultural training and relevant information about these topics has been provided in the module. 
The second part of the module discussed the internal training and developmental issues which incorporated basic skills training, lifelong learning, melting the glass ceiling, sexual harassment training and succession planning. It is necessary and imperative to, to mention at this juncture in the discussion that for various issues like cross-cultural differences, managing diversity, sexual harassment training emerges as one of the solutions, there must be other steps that organization needs to take to develop positive corporate reputation of the firm. Thank you very much. I hope you understood the module well.